Hello. Mm -hmm. Hola amigos, hola amigas. Dorian here from Hoovalux. Welcome. Bienvenido, Kroisui. Salam alaikum. Welcome to the channel, y'all. Chest and Yakshimash. I have to do that intro. <laughs> uh, I'm here with my friend Reese. Say hello, Reese. Hiya. <laughs> and we are here with his absolutely amazing Nissan Leaf. It is a 2018 model, yep. and you've had it since September of last year. Mm -hmm. And how many miles have you racked up on it? Just under 7,000. <laughs> now this is an exclusive for me because this is the first time I've ever been in an electric vehicle of any description. So this is a first time for me. So first of all, what I'm going to do, we're going to go around the car, have a little look at it, and then we will go for a drive. Okay, so we are now looking at the front of the car. Now this is the next generation Nissan Leaf, and it, it is definitely a lot different from the other ones because they just look like a old micro with a battery. <laughs> but yeah. these look really, really sporty. I love it. Now, taking a look at the front, you can see here it's a Nissan. I love that on the inside. I love the colour of it. So within there, that's where they actually hide a bunch of the sensors for the autopilot on it. It's how it detects um, the car in front. So this car's got autopilot? It's got what they call ProPilot, so it does um, what they call intelligent cruise control where it keeps you a set distance from the car in front. Okay. And so the first time you use that, was your bum doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit tense, just kind of letting go of the steering wheel and let it do its thing. Um, but yeah, it's very clever, it keeps you centred in the lane and uh, yeah, you can just sit back and relax. Okay, so it's a bit windy at the moment, so you'll have to apologise. Um, I love the look at it, it is very sticky. It reminds me a lot of a um, Honda Civic. Okay, yeah. It does remind me of a Honda Civic. So, what is that? That there is where the charge points are hidden. Okay, Reese is just going there. <gasps> Ooh, it just opened. <laughs> It's like kit, it's going to go with guns. There you go. Oh wow, okay, excellent. So these are the charging points. This is, yes. this is the only place where you can charge it up here. Yeah? Yes, correct. Okay, what are the differences between those two? So this is the one that you use most often. This is what we call the AC software. And that is for trickle charging? That is for what you call um, trickle and what they call fast charging. It's basically when you plug in ah. AC mains power into the car. So that's like from your house or whatever? Yes. So if like you were visiting family somewhere and they don't have a power point, there's an adapter, I assume, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Yeah. And it gets plugged in there. That's the one. Okay, and what's the other one for? The other one is what we call the DC rapid charge point, And this is where, when you're on the motorway, you'll have a charge station that plugs into here and delivers DC power straight into the car. And how long does that take to charge up? If it was absolutely flat, it would take about 40 minutes to get from flat to 80%. Oh wow, that is amazing. It doesn't go to 100, no? Um, so the last 20% always slows down when you're charging up a battery. Right, okay. Um, so that last bit can take an extra hour if you really want that last 20%. Yeah. And it stays sure. nice and clean in there as well. I can see there's no ingression of... Um, no, it's very well sealed anything. up. Yeah, it's really sealed. Everything looks really clean. And I like the little LED light as well, so you can see what you're doing in the dark. Yep, exactly that. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, excellent. So let's move around to the side of the vehicle. Anything you should point... Oh, I like the wheels. <laughs> Yeah, expensive alloys that I'm always anxious about scuffing. <laughs> but yeah, but they're sort of like lighter, I guess? Yes. So is this car made of sort of like certain recycled materials or anything? Not this car so much, because this is effectively one of the most affordable EVs you can get. The construction is fairly uh, standard. The design is all meant to be as aerodynamic as you can possibly get, pretty much. Okay. Um, unlike, say, the BMW i3, which is all made out of carbon fibre. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I've seen a couple of reviews on that. So uh, let's go move around to the back. We've got the Leaf logo there. I just love the shape of the lights, the way they're incorporated yeah. around into the body. And I really like how they've got the um, the black as well. It contrasts nicely. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I really do like the look of it. Okay, so what's, let's take a look inside the boot. Open up the boot for us. Oh wow! 
<laughs> Flipping out. <laughs> oh, Bose, hello. Yeah, that's my sound system. That's a nice optional extra there, I think. Yep, on the top level trim you get that. Okay, so the boot on this is actually not bad. These do take up a lot of space. What are these? These are just my own personal little storage things. They just Velcro on ah. to the back there. So these didn't come with the car. These are just literally... So these are just like your little portable man bags? Yes. These, these literally have a bunch of like spare cables and things that I cart around with me for... <laughs> where, did you, where did you get them from? Um, they were a birthday present a couple of years back from one of my friends. I don't know where oh, they came wow. from. But okay. Yeah, so yeah, use... without, without the man bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the cables there on the other side, so that's the only place you can store them. Yes, officially. Right, okay. There's not like a panel underneath there. No, can... this is completely flat bottom to this one is. All right, so okay. there's nothing under there. Excellent. And that, I guess, doesn't move. No, that's all fixed in. Okay, what is that? So that is your subwoofer and uh, you'd think of it maybe as the amplifier. For the, it's basically the main part of the sound system. Oh my gosh. But yes, that is the dedicated subwoofer. Wow, love it. Okay, uh, what is that? That is my uh, retrofitted dash cam. <laughs> right, <laughs> With okay. my amazingly <laughs> tucked away cabling. <laughs> uh, mine's pretty much the same as well. Yeah. Okay. But do, do these come with um, built-in dash cams at all? Or? No, not dash cams. Right, okay. Because I know I do know that a lot of new cars do come with the dash cams, and I thought it was like an optional, an extra or something. Yeah, I didn't see anything when I configured this one. Um, okay. I don't think they ever fit anything from the factory for it. Now, I'm asking all these silly questions because to me I am silly so no uh, no they're not silly questions at all <laughs> so yeah plenty of room in the boot what is the boot size capacity oh you're asking me the numbers now um I can't remember I'll have to look that up for you now it's big <laughs> yeah it's enough to like fit a person in there <laughs> the the this lip yes that is a big ass lip so which I guess a lot of car reviewers do comment on the load lip yes yeah I mean with my little shih tzus I think I'd have to pick them up yes you they, definitely they, wouldn't, would. <laughs> they wouldn't be springy enough to get in there <laughs> but I do I do like it I mm -hmm. really really do like it right okay let's move on to the inside okay so I'm outside looking inside this Nissan Leaf looking at oh, I like that that's a nice screen yeah Okay, so that's the mileage over there I can see. Yeah, there's my overall mileage for the car. Right, okay, lots of buttons. Oh, that is the control knob? Yeah, that's where that's your effectively your gear stick. Oh my god, this is <laughs> so cool. The seats are amazing on it. I love this finish with the leather and the suede. Yes, you only get this again on um I think the there's several trims and this is the end connector and the techno that get, get this I do. Okay, believe. it's got the Isofix there. Yeah, very important for families. Alright, okay. I'm just gonna do a quick look at this and we're gonna yeah. take a look at the back. Four doors. Now, let me get my heifer ass in. <laughs> Okay, I'm in. Ah, just about. Okay, very, very comfortable. I guess the seat is pushed back a bit, yeah. but there is still plenty of room here, and it's still got that new car smell. <laughs> just about. Little parcel shelf there. One really thing a lot like of people it. tend to comment on is when you sat at the back, you tend to be sat a bit higher than you are in other cars. Yeah, you are. Because you're yeah. effectively sat on the batteries at that point. Oh. The batteries <laughs> run the length of the floor between the wheels. Oh, wow. I guess you've watched loads of videos on these being made. Yes. <laughs> I did, while when, I was waiting for it for about eight weeks. <laughs> I was going to say, how long did it take from order to delivery? I ordered the car, I think it was um, end of May. Right, okay. Um, and I was quite lucky uh, that I got it in September because I wasn't meant to get it till um, midway through October. Wow. So I got it about a month earlier than I was expecting to. Okay, fantastic. Right. I got some questions for this. So. <laughs> We're gonna switch it on. Yep. So it's all all the contactless entry. So I just have to press my the brake and then the power button, and everything powers up. <gasps> Look at that. And that's it. That's the car on. Wow. <laughs> does, uh, does this one have those like fake sounds? Yes, it does. Okay. And. Can you program them to turn them off or are they standard? I have a lovely little button down here where if I really want to knock over some pedestrians I can mute the external sound. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the sound? It's um, basically a, a, a high pitched whistle. Right, okay. 
is the best way I can describe it. And it changes in pitch according to how fast you're going. Right, okay. It cuts off around the 25 to 30 mile per hour mark because that's where your tyre noise really takes over and you can hear the car coming. Right, okay. Right, so go through some of the things with me. What's on this? What's the what's that pa What's the panel there? What's it? So what we're seeing right now is the fact that the uh, infotainment system is connected to my phone. Yeah. Um, so let me just shut that door yeah, quickly. Yeah, actually. There we go. There we go. So what you're seeing is that I've been listening to an EV News Daily podcast. Um, maybe make a quick shout out to him because... Nerd! <laughs> Don't say that. Um, <laughs> But yes, that, that just shows what's playing on your phone as any other car's infotainment system would. Hit and this car has the um, Mac connector, what's it called? Car AirPlay, CarPlay. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in this car. And that comes as standard? Yes, it does. Okay. On um, everything, uh, apart from the lowest tier of the car, you get that on all of the other trims. Okay, cool. Um, this is the, sort of the main menu, so you can see things like how much energy different things are using in the car. Um, so at the minute, climate control and things are off, and you can see the estimated range of the car as it is. And if I was to put the climate control on with the last known settings, it would lose me two miles. So That's not I, too bad. If I turn it on now, pop it onto heat, um, set a temperature, so 19 degrees, yeah. and you can see that it's changed what my estimated range is. Okay. Um, only slightly, and then again, if I turn it back off, it reverts back. Oh wow, fantastic. So what's the camera button there for? Is that to... I can see... So, <laughs> this is one of my favourite features. <laughs> <laughs> Aerial view of the car from oh when you're trying to line God. up. <laughs> that is so cool. So you can see, um, you get your little radars for your proximity to things around you, but you also get a nice top-down view of the car, so when you're trying to How line up... How the hell do they top, do that? So there's cameras underneath each of the wing mirrors. Yeah. Um, obviously a front-facing camera and a back-facing back camera. And then using some clever tricks in the software, they can create an aerial view of the car. That is so cool. <laughs> that is awkward. That is awesome. Move the car a little bit, you can see it's all real time. Oh God. My driveway needs cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then again, another one that I like is when you're pulling up to park, you've got like a curb camera, so you can make sure that you don't hit your wheels on the curb and it yes. lines up with where the curb you would definitely be. Definitely don't want to be scratching those awesome alloys. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the ways that um, I get over the anxiety of damaging the car when I have to park it up in places. So what kind of other things can you do in the menu then? You've got smartphone connection, climate yep. control, charging station, is that where it tells you where the nearest charging point is? Yeah, so this is the dedicated um, option for going into your map and saying, show me where um, the nearby chargers are and it will have a quick look. Okay, um, now we, I live in Grantham, mm -hmm. so it's actually doing a quick search. So we'll see where, I, I know where the nearest one is, but it says here, yeah, the Moto services. Yeah. Okay. And then comically, it's also shown up my mum and stepdad's <laughs> as down as a charge place because it's quite intelligent that any time you plug in at a location, it okay. will map it in your local store. Uh, so it sees my family's house as a charge point. Okay, so as the Newark as well, that's got a charge point there as well, does it? Yes. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Shame the one in Grantham doesn't have it. Mm. I thought the same thing because it's one of the places I do like to go shopping sometimes. Yeah, exactly, which is a bit of a shame. So, as the Grantham, get your fingers out and start putting <laughs> in some charging stations, girls. Okay, yeah, what's... And then if we head back home... So obviously it's got sat-nav and whatever. Yeah, the sat-nav is part of it and the sat-nav's quite intelligent where if I um, remember where the option is to, for starters... <laughs> <laughs> uh, vehicle, da -da -da -da. I think it all falls under this section. Um, nope, not that one. It was this one maybe. No, that's energy usage. It was a very nifty screen when I can remember where it is. <laughs> Driving range, there's the one. So you can see roughly showing on a map when it brings it up um, where you can drive with your current range on okay. the battery. And it just highlights a, an area on the map. The batteries on it, the, uh, the, this is the top of the range one, isn't it? So for the 2018 <coughs> model here, this is the top of the range Tecna spec, they call it. It has a 40 kilowatt hour battery in it. Mm. Um, this year, for 2019, they're bringing out a model that has a 60 
two kilowatt hour battery if I remember the number specifically. Oh wow. But yeah, this is what I was talking about, the range. So you can see everything within the white circle is what we can definitely get to. And the grey area, the lighter grey area, is like, if you drive economically, it's you can get out this bit. And <laughs> go downhill. And the dark grey is not a chance. You're going to have to charge before you get here. Otherwise, you're going to be on a tow truck. Exactly. We ain't getting the skeg nest. <laughs> okay, what else do we have? What else is in the menu? Um, let's have a quick look. So you've obviously got the common uh, sort of standard things you get on any infotainment system. So you've got your digital radio, DAB, yeah. um, AM, FM. Um, you can go through the address book and add in places for the sat nav. Okay. And then when it hooks into your phone, you've got things like and all your history. phone stuff then as well. And then if I let that put that cable, on. I'll just put it away. Very neat and tidy. <laughs> so if I connect this up. Starting Apple CarPlay. And there we are. Oh wow, that's basically your phone. That's basically the phone. In oh, a... no. Excellent, that's really nice because um, mine has, has Bluetooth connectivity to it, but mm -hmm. obviously n not the Apple AirPlay. So it's the first time I've actually seen yeah. Apple AirPlay on the phone, uh, on the car, and it's, that is, that is really cool. It's nice because as the car gets older, say, and the maps on the car's built-in set now get out of date, you can just rely on your phone to stay up to date. Yes, exactly. And use that one instead of the one in the car. But I do like using the car's built-in sat nav because you also get your instructions come up on this screen, right, on your okay. dash, so I don't necessarily have to look over at this screen, I can look at just this one. Okay, so explain to me a little bit more about this screen. So this one shows me, um, obviously you've got your speedometer there, yeah. as you get on any car. This one is kind of similar to what your rev meter would be. Right, okay. Um, so when you put your foot down, this bar fills with white to say you're putting power into the motors yeah and as you slow down it goes into the blue and that's actually using the motion of the wheels to recharge the battery ah uh, that's regeneration yeah regenerative okay. braking regenerative braking okie dokie um i can also flick through to the next screen which shows me the estimated tar charge times depending on what level of charger i'm on so if the charge on that is just three kilowatts, it will take about 12 hours to get up to full. Okay. If I change this over to what a 50 kilowatt rapid would be, yeah, that would be one and a half hours to get to full, 21 minutes to get to 75%. Okay. Um, so that just always gives you an idea of roughly how long you're gonna have to stop to charge based on what level of charge you're at. Battery temperature, um, important for monitoring on long trips because this car, is a little bit notorious for not having actu active battery thermal management, right, okay. which just means that there isn't a dedicated cooling system for it. Oh. Um, so as you drive along and you recharge it, the batteries get progressively yes. warmer, and eventually the car's computer says, okay, I'm not gonna charge at full speed to keep the batteries <laughs> within spec. Yes. But if you're sat there thinking, oh, it's only gonna take me 40 minutes to charge, and then the battery just <laughs> decide, nope, it's gonna take you longer, Oops. people get angry and then take to Twitter. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, and then battery capacity is the one to watch sort of over the life of the car because as batteries get older, just like in your phone, they don't last as long and that keeps track of that. Okay. Um, and then yes, I've got many other screens. They, this one hooks into what's playing off your infotainment system. This one hooks into your sat nav. Mm -hmm. I want to grey that one out if you don't want people knowing exactly where you live. <laughs> oh, that's alright. <laughs> um, this one shows the average economy, so they measure this, how you'd normally think of miles per gallon, mm. you get on this miles um, per kilowatt hour. Okay. So uh, kilowatt, a kilowatt hour is a thousand watts delivered over an hour of time. Okay. Um, so for every thousand watts of power I use effectively, I can travel just under four miles average at the minute, mm. is what I've been getting. And that chart fills up over time when you drive to show your economy over time. How many miles have you done in it so far, did you say? Uh, I think I did 120 something going from Nottingham to Watford. And you have done how many miles in total? To almost 7,000. Almost 7,000. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's been going e crazy. Yep. <laughs> okay. And then this screen, I'll have to show you this screen when we're actually driving, but this yep. is the screen that pops up when you go into your ProPilot. Right, okay. So when you're in ProPilot, you will see a picture of another car in front of you when it detects a car in front of you. Yes. And you'll also get grey lines on either side of this road here to say it's looking for the, the lane markings. Yes. And they turn green when it sees them, and once it sees them, then it keeps you centred in your lane. <laughs> All right, okay. 
And you have to keep your hands on the wheel? Yes, you do. If you Is take there a hand... warning? Yes. <laughs> you get first a, a visual warning, then an auditory warning, and mm. then if you don't respond to that, the car decides to throw on the hazards and start bringing the car to a stop. Because <laughs> it assumes you've had a stroke or something yeah, exactly. and you can't yeah, drive. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, these, these features in the car, these are... These these features save lives. They do, yeah. Regardless of what car it is, mm -hmm. you know. So I can see there are lots of buttons on <laughs> that uh, steering wheel. Yep. How did you find it? Are you used to it now? I've always been someone who likes gadgets, so quite frankly, yes. having lots of buttons for me was actually exciting, not right, okay. daunting. Okay. Um, but the main ones you need to know. Um, these ones are the ones you find on almost any car. So these ones uh, do you forward and backwards yeah. uh, and you volume up and down. Okay. And then you use the arrows on here to navigate through your menus on this screen. Right, okay. On this side, however, this is a little bit more specific to the car. Um, you've got your pick up the phone and talk to sort of the voice commands. Siri, yeah. um, but this button here, the blue one, mm. that's the pro pilot button that right, enables okay. the car self-driving. And then this one is just your speed limiter. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So when you're driving along, you hit that one, and then you now go... I used the speed limiter when we were down in London last weekend and we were driving around. Mm -hmm. I used my limiter a lot because yes. I didn't want to accidentally go over the speed limit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think a lot of people use the limiter, and I think if they did, <laughs> they wouldn't get so many speeding tickets. Yes, I agree. And speeding in one of these cars is so easy to do because you have no gears to kind of gauge how fast you're going or sound. You just put your foot down and you go. Yeah. So okay. I, I often rely on the speed limit to just kind of comfortably yeah. know I can keep my foot down yeah. and I'm not going to drift over the speed limit. Okay, so we're down a bit further now here. These are all the climate control buttons, I assume? Yep, all of your standard kind of options, recirculation, changing the mode, uh, putting your demisters on and yeah. Personally, I think that's really good because I've noticed with a lot of car reviews, if every single thing is in the screen, mm -hmm then sometimes just doing something simple. very simple by turning the temperature down by one degree. Yeah. <laughs> you need to pull over. <laughs> yeah, it becomes a challenge. Yeah, exactly. So I really like the fact that you kind of keep the physical buttons for that. Yes. Um, and then, yes, down here you've got your heated seat controls. And ah, bum warmers. Yeah. And if you look on the passenger seat here, you've also got one for the uh, rear passengers. Mm. So everyone gets heated seats. Oh, I feel like I'm weeing myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yep, you've got your normal 12 volt connector there. Okay. Uh, USB for connecting up to the car, yeah. doing either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And then your 3.5mm jack as well, if you've not got a phone to use one of those features, you can just plug into that and okay. send your sound through there. And what's this intriguing joystick? <laughs> so this is the gear selector. So at the minute we're in park. Yeah. Um, so we're not going anywhere. If I put my foot down on here, I can then shift us along into... Let's move the table. There we are. So that puts us in neutral. Okay. So that will just allow us to roll. Um, that throws us into reverse, which also brings up hey. the reversing camera. Okay. <laughs> and then DB is drive. Oh, that's my old initials. <laughs> <laughs> um, D is you know standard drive. B is braking. So if I go into this mode again, you can see up here, the car tells me that I'm in B. Right, and all okay. that is, is your regenerative braking is harder. So if you're going down a steep hill or something, yes. going to B and it's like shifting down a gear or two, oh, it right, allows yeah, you to kind of get that, feel that engine yes. braking effect. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, you just then push the button to go back into park. <laughs> and then this one here is my actual... Um, Mechanical hand. Oh, I like the work. sound of that. <laughs> yeah. That's like being on the Star Trek Enterprise. Me <laughs> likey. Okay, uh, so this uh, is, and that is for, that's that little P there. What's that P for? That's to turn off the parking sensor. Yes, that one, because sometimes they just activate at times you don't need them to, so that can just shut them off. Okay. And then over here, you've got the eco button, which throws the car into eco mode, which just reduces the amount of power you can put into the accelerator. Right, and okay. increases the regenerative braking a little bit. So you bit. can't do, um, in Tesla, they call it um, insane mode, is it? Oh, they have <laughs> ludicrous mode. <laughs> ludicrous <laughs> mode. No, there is no ludicrous <laughs> mode in this car. <laughs> Especially with the eco button on. Especially not with the eco button on. So this is your first electric vehicle. Yes. It's your first kind of automatic or have you driven yeah. automatics before? It is my first automatic car as well. My my last car, which was my only other car, was a yeah. manual petrol. Okay, and how do you find this? 
I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely I, love it. I love all the tech and the gadgets on it as yeah. well. And as people who watch this know, I love tech gadgets and flashing lights and anything like that. So this is so cool. I do right. have to point out as well this one, because this is one of the key features of the car <gasps> okay. that people talk about in the advertisements. That's the e-pedal button. And that basically puts the car into single pedal driving mode. And that is where you put your foot down to go. Ah, uh, yes. Ease your foot off to stop. And with just that one pedal, you can basically drive. It doesn't matter if you're going uphill, downhill or whatnot, the car will come to a complete stop. So that's really good for sort of like if you're in stop start traffic maybe? Yes, perfect for that kind of that kind of driving. Okay, I like that. Right, okay, hang on. Okay, so we have now seen the ins and outs of the car by looking at the dashboard. I think it's time we went for a run in the car. <laughs> Okay, so now we are in the car and we are about to go for a jolly. We are going to go and top up with electricity. Yep. And I shall turn off the artificial sound. In fact, if you want to hear the artificial sound, if yes. it's not too windy, we'll wind the windows down. Okay, let's see if we can hear it. Okay, it's moving. All you can hear is the beep. <laughs> get out of the way! Get out of the way! <laughs> there we go! Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so, that there, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but that is the artificial noise. If I turn it off, Ah, yes, yes, I can hear that. I hear that whistling. Route guidance to your destination. Thank you. At the end of the road, turn left. Then, in 50 yards, turn left. A la fin de la calle, <laughs> turn a la izquierda. So that's the car's built in sat nav. All right, okay. Um, turn left, then, in 200 yards, bear right. Is that this? Yeah, yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> It turns on a sixpence, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's just so quiet. On the screen in front of you. Yeah. Yards at Rather the than end having of the to road, look at this. Turn left. Okay. Bear right now. And that just pops up when I've got instructions, otherwise it will just go back to whatever my main screen is. So we're going to come onto a road. This is 30 miles an hour here at the moment. We're going to come onto the main road because we're going to turn at the yeah, end left. of the road, see turn here, left. It sees the 30 mile per hour speed limit. It should change to 40 in a minute because it visually yes. picks up those signs. So I wanted to, I wanted to put your foot down. Now. Only up to 40, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how much the torque. Okay then. Okay. Uh, ready? Torque, good girl. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is so cool! <laughs> That's like being on a roller coaster. That That's my. Oh my god, I'm no longer a talk virgin. <laughs> that is what we call the EV smile. <laughs> <laughs> I have got the EV smile. There we go, I got the EV smile. <laughs> <laughs> it is something that you really have to kind of experience firsthand to truly understand. Yeah, definitely. That is so cool. But yeah, it's. Um, as a driver, it's quite nice knowing that you've always got that power. You're not having to worry about what gear you're in or yes. what gear the car is doing. Because I've driven an automatic since getting this car. Yes. Because my stepdad had a, um, a Range Rover while his was in for repair. Okay. And he let me drive it around the, the country fields where they live. Yeah. And it was weird because I put my foot down to make it go. Yes. And it was like waiting for it, waiting for it, uh, and then it went. I guess you were like really missing that instant yeah. torque. Because literally, as soon as you put your foot down, the motor is there to deliver that power. Hmm. I mean, it is very, very quiet, but you can <laughs> still hear the dogs, you can hear tire noise and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the road noise is your main thing that you end up hearing. Yeah, exactly, and there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> no. Some cars, um, some of the more luxury cars are obviously a little bit more insulated, I would say. Yes. But even if you were to then go back and sit in my old the Vauxhall Corsa, yeah. the road noise in that was more pronounced than in this. Yeah, Even yeah, though yeah. you had an yeah. engine as well. Yeah, exactly. It, it is still, it is still very, very, very quiet. It's yes. amazingly quiet. I'm 
we're on another uh, road where we can do it, I'll do the the full power thing again. <laughs> Ludicrous mode! <laughs> Right, okay, so I'm going to shut up for a minute now and uh, we will carry on in just a second. Okay, so at the moment we are on one pedal. Did that take a, a lot of getting used to? It gets, it, it makes you read the road ahead a lot more because you have to gauge how long it's going to take you They're to stop. They're right at okay. the second turn. Because you turning. have a constant level of um, stopping power effectively. And if you do need to They're stop in an right emergency, someone comes out you, you can always put your foot on the brake pedal. It's not like it's turned off or anything. Right, okay. Um, but effectively in this mode, the car can do all of its braking almost with the regenerative brakes. Okay, we can um, the traffic lights on. He's taking his foot off and we're stopping. And now we've stopped. So if you were to sort of like take your foot off completely quick, the car would just come to a dead stop? Well, no, that was me taking my foot off completely. Ah, right, okay. Now, because you kind of, you bring your foot up slightly to kind of start the braking force. Yeah. Um, but as we were going at about 20 miles per hour, there, I knew I needed all that stopping power. So right, I, okay. just, I just let my foot off of it. Not. You are in the wrong lane, but never mind. <laughs> I'll just go across here now. <laughs> okay, so that's really good. I would take a lot of getting used to. And then that's it. Once you take your foot off, you stop. You're not yeah. going to roll back or forward or anything. No, not at all. The car is intelligent enough because at this point it has put on the friction brakes right, okay. to keep us stopped and it will do so until I put my foot down again. Okay, so we are about to move forward. Yeah. I love the sound. <laughs> I've got the power going to the motors. It's got a, 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 a nice whirring noise, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Okay, so I've got you perched here because what are we going to see? You're going to see at the minute, we're, we're cruising along at just under 30 miles an hour, so we're putting in small amounts of power to the motors. As soon as we have any need to stop, you're going to see that everything's going to go into the blue, and that's showing you how much power we're putting back into the battery by slowing down. So as we ease off now... Oh yeah, I can see you, yeah. And this ties right. in with how much I'm putting my foot down, or taking my foot off the accelerator. So the white there tells you how much you're taking out. Yep. And then when you slow down, it and it goes into the blue, that's how much you're putting back into it. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 I can see. And as it goes past a certain point, it also brings up the brake lights. So to anyone else on the road, I'm yes. braking is normal. Okay, yes. But for me in this car, I'm not moving my foot off one pedal. Oh, it's okay. Okay, I love it. Okay, let's carry on now till we start getting on um, so fast. Do you want me to backtrack what we were talking yeah, about? Yeah, we were talking about the bad, but just before we do that, we're coming to a faster bit now. <laughs> so we're coming out to 30 and then we can start sort of like going up to 60. All right then, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is so cool. I love it. For me, that was insane mode. <laughs> And now you're braking and you're putting so much blue back into it. Because we're going downhill. And we're going downhill. We're putting power to the battery, baby. <laughs> Put into the groove. <laughs> Put the power to the battery, baby. I can't sing, sorry. Okay, so we are just pulling up now to the services where the charging point is. Take the second left turn. Yes. In 100. Uh -huh. right. Um yeah that was but um oh, can we, have we got another way to go? Yeah but yeah. <laughs> I'm not going I think. In this direction. Yeah we can. No. Yes. I know. No, no it's entry. not, it's way no out. Oh shit. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll go around the Round roundabout. And then we'll come back. <laughs> yeah, so we will actually do now a demonstration of the turning around a roundabout. <laughs> oh I've just and he Are indicated at the last around? minute, yeah. Fly away. 
Probably mowed the way crows. <laughs> The indicator sounds very. All the sounds on it are sort of like soft and calming and soothing. Yeah, I think a lot of it has been designed as well about familiarity. Yes. Because um, I've been in some cars where they don't have that click for the uh, indicators, and I find <laughs> it jarring. Well, yeah, because you wouldn't know if you had accidentally switched them on or not, mm. unless you actually looked for the pinging thing. Oh no, we got to avoid that puddle because we just you just cleaned <laughs> just washed this car, the car. <laughs> and you washed it in a very thorough washing. <laughs> Do you take it to the hand wash? Oh uh, yeah, I took I took it to the. Uh... Do you find that you get sort of like people sort of like double taking, looking at it, take and the second right not turn, massively? Have you become an attention whore at in it? <laughs> Only at traffic lights when I want to show up the like fancy sport cars that go in the fast lane. Mm. Talk, because obviously, obviously there or there go. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go really fast. I'm just gonna go. Okay, zoom. <laughs> so we are at the services. Where is the charge point? I think it's over to the left here. And if you would like, I will let you have the honours of plugging it in. <gasps> Girl, <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, so, we've actually got another Nissan Leaf over there charging as well. Ah. Oh, we've got two. We're going to have to wait. <laughs> oh, is there a spare? Is in 100 yards. Yeah, you there's two charging points your here. Destination. And Ending they're both plugged in. Guidance. There you are. There's the old shape of my car. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, right, okay. I'll pull up next to them and wait for my turn. Okay, so we happen to be very cheekily next to an old version of this car, which looks like a Micra on steroids. Um, no offence to it. It, it, it is nice, don't get me wrong, right? It is nice. It's very, very slick. It's very, very sort of like aerodynamic. But this is just like, this is the Honda Civic of the Nissan Leaf. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like the sports version. This is grandma. <laughs> This is the rebellious teenager, you know? This is the same spec as mine, as in the top tier Techno specs, so the seats are the same. Um, All right, the alloys yeah, yeah. are very similar. Yeah, they are very similar, yeah. But yeah, I really like it. Right, okay, we're gonna let this bit charge up. And... Okay, so we are here inside the services in the Costa, having a chai latte and a toasty sandwich. And why are we are enjoying our chai lattes and toasty sandwiches? We've got the app, and so we can visually see how far is left on the charging of the car through the app. And it's telling me 89 miles at 54%. And we will see, we've only been in here for a little while and it's gone from what type, what was it? 30% 30 to 54 and only a matter of like 15 minutes. 
Yeah, probably less than that, so it's charging up really quick. So I'll come back to you when it's all charged up. Okay, we walk back to the vehicle. It's been about 40 minutes. What does it say on the display? We've got 50 minutes to charge. We've got 89%. Charge session's finished, but you're up to 89. Now I think we should take it onto the A1 yeah. and you can show me mental mode. Yeah. Right then. Okay, the engine's on, we're on 90%. We are ready to go. We are also going to do a demonstration of the autopilot, which I will probably cack my pants. <laughs> <laughs> No, you won't. You'll feel perfectly secure. So we put it into reverse. The cameras are on. It's warning us that there's something in front of us. <laughs> you don't say. No. <laughs> Do you want to sort of vaguely direct me, and then I'll. Um, yes, just the drive end. it. Just follow it round for the way out. So hang on, we'll come back when we get onto the. Okay, so we're just coming onto the slip road for the A1. Ooh, <laughs> for oh, the power! Power! As you can see, the white part's going right up. <laughs> we lost echo. We lost eco mode then for a minute. <laughs> First, I'm going to press this and it's going to prime it into okay. both elements. So it's we've talking primed. about all of the sensors. And yeah. then I hit set, so that sets our speed. Yeah. It sees the car in front. Yeah. Steering assist on. Green lines means it sees, sees the lines on the road. Okay. And yeah, I'll just tell it that it can go up to 70 miles an hour. And yeah, at this point, it is driving itself. <laughs> <laughs> hands free. So obviously, it has the warnings if you take your hands off the so wheel. You're going to see it there. So there's a little warning triangle come up. Yeah. Warning saying so hands on the wheel. To it, and then it's happy again. Okay. So I tend to just drive around like this and it, it tends to be quite happy. Okay. And I can just feel the wheel, all of this motion that the wheel is doing is itself. And I just have my hand on it so it's got the weight of my hand to kind of say I am here. Okay. Another thing, if you look at my wing mirror there, as cars pass, you can see it lights up. Oh, and that yes. says that they're in my blind spot. Okay. So I know when people are in the blind spot. And on the display that's telling you that there's a car in front, is that what it's saying? Yeah. And if I say I want to actually be closer to that car, I can adjust the uh, separation oh, right, distance. Okay. So that will allow us to get closer. What about automatic lane changing? So automatic lane changing isn't a thing. What it does uh, is when I want to change lanes, I have to indicate. Yes. And it will take off the lane keep assist, allowing to steer in and it will catch the lanes again. But it'll do it itself? Um, it or will, you have to steer it? I steer it and it will re-enable the autopilot itself once it's in lane right, again. Okay. Now this one's got that, if the car in front slams on its brakes, your car will stop automatically. Yes. Which I've seen a lot of demos on, mm -hmm. and it seems to work better in these cars than it does in some of the big cars. Yeah, th this car got a lot of uh, praise for the reliability of its... Um, they did the test with the fake car in front. Yeah. The motorcyclist and all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's very good because it, it will obviously slam on the regenerative braking, but it also puts on the mechanical brakes. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I can definitely attest to having had it have to kick in before. And yes. it feels very disconcerting when the car is stopping before you've even kind of got your foot across. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's something you get used to. Yeah. I mean, what I will show you is if I just take control now. Yeah. So one of the other things is lane keeps it. So if you look on my screen still, if I just drift over as if I was moving across the lanes. Oh. oh okay, it tells you. So that's lane keep. Okay. So when you indicate that doesn't happen, obviously. Yes. But if you just start drifting, it does warn you that you are drifting into a different lane. And if you were to just change lanes without indicating that would happen as well that would happen anyway. so hopefully it'll stop people or start make people start using their indicators more one would hope as more cars have <laughs> it so 
So this is our exit. And then to disengage everything then, is it just one button? Yeah, I can just hit the cancel button here or I can press the same button that I pressed to start it. Okay. And takes it off. Excellent, okay, I love that. So we are on the last leg of our journey to go home after my amazing trip <laughs> in this Nissan Leaf. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Um, this is the first, oh, sorry, it's down there. It's, yeah, left, sorry, it's my fault. It's all right. <laughs> I do, um, I've always wanted to have a go in an electric car and Reese and I have been planning this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry, I had to get a chance. Wild to mode. <laughs> um, so we'd been planning this for ages, but I'm I'm glad that we finally got to do this video with you guys of my first trip in the electric vehicle. And I have to say, I love it. This is the only only electric vehicle I've ever been in, but I really do love it. It's up here now, yeah. and it really feels like a normal car. That's what I was saying to. It it doesn't scream electric vehicle i mean the sounds on it are a bit different but if you're listening to music or anything you're not going to hear that anyway but it just feels like a proper car i really love it and you obviously love it oh yeah i love it <laughs> <laughs> every time i get the ev smile <laughs> uh straight up there you know where we're going now roughly <laughs> roughly so what I'm going to do now is because uh, we'd had a look at the boot, but I forgot to have a look underneath the front bonnet. So what we're going to do is when we get outside my house, uh, we're going to have a look and see what's under the bonnet. Okay, so we've parked up and before it starts piddling down with rain, <laughs> let's take a look and see what's under the front. Oh, wow. So again, if I hadn't told you it was an electric car. No. So the back is underneath. What is all this stuff? Um, I kept describing the Type 2 port as an AC connector. Yeah. So, you know how when you've got like, your iPhone or whatnot and you plug that brick into the wall? Yes. That's effectively what this is. Uh, this is what turns the AC power from your mains into DC for the battery. Right, okay. And then as you work your way down, there is a reduction gear. Yeah. And then at the very bottom, there's the motor that turns the axle. All oh, right, yeah. We can just see that underneath. It's all fantastically lovely. Everything with orange cabling is all your high voltage cabling that goes to the main battery, which is a 400 volt battery. Not touchy. <laughs> Couple of me. And there's no, you can't see everything underneath there is sealed. So it's mm -hmm. a sealed pan. Yes. So there's no dust or anything like a conventional engine. Nothing comes up into it. No. It's completely sealed. Because it doesn't have to worry about oil leaks or anything. So it can be a more sealed unit. That's really cool. There. So the engine should technically stay cleaner. Yeah. Know, for longer. Okay, cool. And yeah, you got obviously your windscreen wiper fluid. Yeah. Um, and then all these pipes that you see here are part of the heating cooling system. Is it the flex capacitor? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to think of it that way, yes. <laughs> Um, you do have, just like any other car, sort of a fan at the front here, and that is again for the air conditioning system. There's always like a hot and cold oh, part yes. of it. Okay. And then, yeah, your traditional 12 volt battery there, okay. which powers all of your headlights and your radio and things like that. Oh, what's that little thing over there? That looks, is that part of the air conditioning? I think that's the compressor for the air conditioner, I do oh, believe. Wow. Yeah, I never see, you never get to see it so clear. <laughs> Obviously, this is more like a traditional air conditioner because it's just running off electric power. It's not having to run off the uh, belt on a yes, the trolley of the engine. Yeah. Okay, I absolutely love it. Right. Okay, I'm just going to turn the camera around and we'll finish off. Okay, so there we go. That is us finishing off the video. My first ever go in an electric vehicle, and I'm very proud to say that it was this Nissan Leaf. Yeah. It's second generation. It was absolutely fantastic. So. I'd like to say a great big thank you to Reese for me. giving me all the information and taking me for a ride on it. I think we're going to go inside and have a cup of coffee now because it is yeah. very windy and very cold. That's so <laughs> please comment, like and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you all very soon. Bye y'all. Bye -bye.